Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the City of Sacramento City Council meeting on this date of March the 14th, 2017. Uh, would the clerk please do a roll call, please? Yes, we'll start with Member Ashby. Here. Warren. Here. Harris. Hansen. Here. Chenier. Guerra. Carr. Here. Mayor Steinberg. And Vice Mayor Jennings. Here. We do have a quorum. This meeting is broadcast live this evening, and there is a replay on Saturday, 7 p.m. on Metro Cable Channel 14. If you would like to speak, please complete a speaker slip located in the back of the room. Turn it into the assistant clerk at the front. And if you uh, need assistance, we have cordless microphones and, a list and assisted listening devices. Thank you. All right. We will then move to our Pledge of Allegiance. And since we're still in Women's History Month, I'd like to bring to the podium, for the first time here at City Council, the Senior Deputy City Clerk, Nell Hessel. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So thank you very much, Nell. You do an incredible job there. And I think one of the most difficult jobs that we have in the chamber, and you do a great job. And so I just wanted to honor you by allowing you to do the Pledge of Allegiance. And thank you so much. OK. We did not have closed session, so therefore we did not have anything to report out from there. And with that, we'll move to the next, our first agenda item. Okay, we have the consent calendar, um, which will be items one through seven. And I have no, we have a speaker. I have no changes, corrections, or additions. We do have one person signed up to speak, and that person is Craig Powell on item number one. Okay. I do Actually, have a move Nancy approval Kitts from uh, as well. Member Hanson. I'll let the speakers come up, and then I'll wait for the second. All right, second by Member Warren. We can put that up on the screen. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Vice Mayor. How are you? Members of the council, as depleted as you may be, it's great to see you. Uh, Mr. Chan, it's great to see you, uh, and always surely. Um, one thing I wanted to report on, uh, another hat I wear is as the lead coordinator of the Land Park Volunteer Corps, and I just had to brag that last Saturday we had our first park work day of the year. We have them every month. We had a record turnout of 295 volunteers, uh, 95 more than our uh, highest before, and so we're very pleased about that. But I'm appearing here today on a different matter. Um, you received a letter uh, hand-delivered and by email this afternoon about concerns we have with how the Law and Legislation uh, Committee had handled um, the, the recommendation of moving up to you uh, an ordinance for a, an ethics code as well as a, uh, an ethics commission ordinance. And we've identified a, what we believe to be a likely Brown Act violation. Uh, and it's because the, the, the ethics or the, the Law and Ledge Committee was essentially working off of a letter um, from a couple of groups um, and, and, and were negotiating and had been negotiating apparently with these groups. But the public never had an opportunity to see this letter. And these are the same groups that entered into a closed door process with the city and city reps uh, a year and a half ago. Ion Sacramento was part of a large coalition that held 10 very public forums on the issue of ethics and transparency reform. And Ion Sacramento has been systematically excluded from that process, um, including being physically barred from a city conference room uh, where these matters were being discussed. Um, and now this is more another example of how uh, you folks on, the, on that committee have been working in closed doors, essentially, behind closed doors, or certainly without the public being able to be aware of what's going on with these, these proposals. So we think that's a bad process. In a few days, we're going to be proposing to you a model ethics code and a model ethics commission ordinance. And we hope you take it seriously. Now, we know this is only for um, publication today, but, but our recourse, if we can't see a true, robust, functional, independent, well-financed ethics commission, is to pursue the ballot. It's expensive to do that. It's time consuming to do that. We would rather not do that. But folks, we've got to have a dialogue here. And so far, there just has not been any dialogue 
between us and our ethics reform committee that's been hard at work for a year and a half. So with that, we, uh, we leave it for your good judgment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would you like to respond, City Attorney? Vice Mayor and Council, just a couple, couple of points. Um, first of all, under the Brown Act, it is not a violation of the Brown Act for a legislative body to receive third-party letters and consider those in their decisions, which is what happened with the Law and Legislation Committee. The Brown Act does require that any letters be made available to the public upon request. Uh, Ion Sacramento alleges that the clerk did not make that particular letter from the League of Women Voters and Common Cause available to them until 13 days after their request. There's a difference of opinion. The clerk's office has represented that they made their, they made the document, the letter available on the Monday following a Friday request that was left on a voicemail. So uh, assuming that to be the case, there is no action here that impairs the council from proceeding tonight. There is no Brown Act violation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, another. We have one more speaker. We have another speaker. Yes, yes. please. Uh -huh. yes. Uh, Nancy Kitts is next. That's right. I'll get you a hold for a second, please. Sure. On that, uh, <clears throat> John, had there been a Brown Act violation, what's the cure? Vice Mayor and Council, depending on the, the violation itself, a cure would be to re-notice and provide the 72-hour uh, notice of a regular meeting and proceed. Do it over again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Vice Mayor and members, Madam Clerk. My name is Nancy Kitts. Today is the beginning of the week that is very important to Americans, Sunshine Week. Like a great orb that lights and warms the earth, Sunshine Week is an opportunity to consider and insist upon open and transparent government. Prodding political leaders to conduct business in open meetings, not hide behind vague rules and regulations, and to discuss topics and make decisions in clear view of the public isn't simply a matter worrying journalists. We worry over transparency because government belongs to all of us. Government is for the people. I'm here to underscore the Ion Sacramento letter, which you all received today, with regard to uh, the February 14th Law and Ledge meeting. I disagree with the city attorney, um, and in fact, it's not true that I received a letter the Monday after I placed uh, a phone message. I, in fact, did not receive the letter until I made three phone calls, and I was contacted, I believe it was February 27th which is 13 days after the meeting. There is a violation of the Brown Act here. Any materials available to the members during a meeting should be immediately available to the public, immediately. There was not even any disclosure at this meeting that there was a document, that there was a document that you were all referring to, that no one, I, I watched the video. I didn't know what they were talking about. Let's add this, let's add that. The committee had a letter from Common Cause, League of Women Voters, and LULAC. The letter suggested several substantial changes to both proposed ordinances. This document was not made public at the time of the meeting. Discussion went on between the members and the staff, including the city attorney and the city clerk concerning suggestions, suggestions that made significant changes to the bills and which ones should be added to the proposed ordinances. Even after the city attorney opined during this meeting that the letter raises some policy and legal issues, Member Hansen made a motion to move item five and six with direction that we incorporate feedback from the league in this joint letter with LULAC and Common Cause as we discussed, just to sit down with them and see what to incorporate. When I told the city clerk that the motion did not expressly move this, these items to council for for approval. If you could give me your final comments, please. Sure. She advised me that that's our culture. That's how we do things. Fortunately for the public, the Brown Act doesn't recognize individual public agency cultures. There was a violation with regard to having that letter available to public officials while they're conducting public business. There's also a violation of concurrence that may have happened 
before and during this meeting without the public's knowledge. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I have a motion by Council Member Hanson and a second by Council Member Warren. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right. We are unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, next item, please. Okay, item number eight is um, a notice public hearing that needs to have a motion to continue it to March 21st. It's the weed and rubbish abatement. Uh, moved by <laughs> Councilwoman Ashby and second by Councilmember Warren. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? All right, we will move to public comment matters not on the agenda. Yes, we have about six that have signed up to speak. We'll start with Richard Wake, followed by Janet Fricky. Kari Miskell, and Braden Murphy. Good evening, members of the City Council. I'm here to address the homeless issue again. I'm here again because on Thursday night, I was driving southbound on 19th Street when I came to Broadway. There was a homeless man lying face down in the street and I had to call the fire department to come and see if the guy was actually alive. I found that to be very disturbing and, you know, I just think that we're not continuing to do enough about the homeless issue. But the point I'd like to make tonight is this. If Council Member Jennings can get the water tower changed down in his city council district without a vote of the city council that affects the entire image of the city, Council Member Warren should be able to open up a homeless shelter in his district and serve the constituents of his district as he sees fit to do that. Um, we have, we knew we're in desperate need of opening more homeless shelters. I have a friend that's homeless right now that I went to Sac State with that has a bachelor's degree in communications, worked for the state for 10 years at the Franchise Tax Board and also worked for the phone company. And now he's sleeping over at Volunteers of America because he's mentally ill and can no longer work. We have a place to open up a triage center here in Sacramento, and I've mentioned this several times before. Currently, there's nothing going on at the Sleep Train Arena, and we were promised and promised and promised that there would be a reuse issue, uh, a reuse of the Sleep Train Arena, and nothing's been done. We have a triage center that we can open up in North Atomas. Angelique Ashby needs to open up something in her district as well as the other districts because the other shelters and the other city council districts, everything is in Councilman Hansen's district. Let's open up the Sleep Train Arena as a triage center. Let's allow Council Member Warren to open up the homeless shelter in his district and let's get homeless shelters open in every district. People are dying in the streets. One of my best friends that I went to Sac State with is homeless. You, you can see out here from the meals that are being served out to these people. For God's sakes, let's do something. Let's do something now. Thank you. Thank you. Janet. Hi, good, good evening. Um, I looked at the agenda and I thought that we would have had some time for comments for some of the things that are in the agenda item, but on the agenda, but I'm just gonna go ahead and, and add with some of the things um, for parks and putting money in. Um, I'm respectfully requesting that money that goes to parks, it includes water, water fountains and bathrooms. It's not just for people that aren't homed. Um, once upon a time, I did daycare and I would take two and three year olds to the park. They would need to drink and go to the bathroom just like people that are at home. We all have to. So um, I know I've, I've brought it before. There's water fountains that are turned off. Please turn them on. And if you won't turn them on, Please put in writing on stationary letterhead why the bathrooms remain locked and why the drinking fountains remain turned off. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I have a lot of respect for Mr. Warren. He is standing up. And a lot of you guys are standing up too. Um, but first and foremost, get the people that need help now while you're working on your goal. Please support Mr. Warren in his district to get a really good 
tent city type of thing with the triage. Let him be the role model for you guys, and then each of you follow suit in the district. Um, my, my time's up. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Akari Miskell, and then Braden Murphy. Okay, I guess Kari does not need to speak. Braden Murphy. This is working yet. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, everybody's here to make these great comments that just seem so obvious, but apparently not obvious to the people that are in charge. And I want to say that we're 100% behind Mr. Warren, and I think it's pretty disastrous that it, that it took a whole two weeks. He had asked, can we get it on the agenda either this week or the next week? And I guess it's going to be brought up at the joint uh, meeting next week, which we all plan to be at. And I just hope that when Mr. Warren does bring it up, that he wants to actually help people and do something right now, do something immediately, not in years from now that it will take for the permanent housing to be built, that not only are you guys not shy and let it just hang there when he says that he wants to do something about people now, but then you all talk about where you also are going to provide tent cities in your areas and continue to look for shelter and at least have his back on this. He's asking for a very simple thing which is to help people the, the following day after the joint meeting to actually make a difference immediately. You guys were elected to deal with issues that happen in the city and in your districts, and homelessness is an issue everywhere. It should be on the front of everybody's mind. It should be on the front of everybody's priority. And I understand that when business call you and they're frustrated uh, that homeless are around and they don't want tents to be pitched, I understand that can be a frustrating thing and a frustrating part of politics. But we need to start putting people first, people before the businesses. We need to understand that businesses might be frustrated, but that people cannot die. People cannot die freezing to death or dying of heat stroke. And so it, I do 100% commend Mr. Warren, but it's a little bit odd that something so simple gets so much excitement and so much commitment because all he wants to do is help the most people that are desperately in need and need our help. Please, next week, get behind Mr. Warren and say how you're going to help in your own districts. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hey, Wanda. And then Fago, and the last speaker, David Andre. There is something I wanted to talk about because of an incident that happened this weekend when a couple of us decided to feed the people that were in uh, uh, Cesar Chavez Park. Um, we, five minutes after we got there, we must have had every cop that was available, at least eight to nine officers at the Cesar Chavez Park, which are saying, you council people are requesting them be there. They're saying, Our, your council has requested us not only to be here, it, uh, when uh, it, that we're here at all times. What they're not there prior to our coming. This is harassment. This is out and out harassment. If you guys are telling these guys that they need to be at the parks when we're feeding and telling me that, the, uh, that these guys are criminals, we're feeding criminals. This is what this officer said. I have it all on, uh, all on uh, tape. These people, some of these people may be, but this officer had no right to sit there and scare me to death, to make, to make me feel that we were, uh, we were taking care of the un, uh, 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 criminals. These guys aren't criminals. They might be one or two, but they're not all criminals, and you need to direct your police officers into that. If you guys are telling them that these people are criminals, you're wrong. You guys are handling things wrong. It's time for us to back Mr. Warren up. He's trying to do something that's right. 
We have people that are dying on our streets, and no one is doing anything except Mr. Warren. I commend him. Yeah. There you go. So I, too, would like to issue my support for Warren's idea of opening up a tent city uh, in his own district. Uh, and I'm kind of appalled at the resistance that he's been getting to this idea. Uh, this is something that would not only lessen the amount of um, people wandering the streets at night, uh, it would also give them someplace safe to be. To, uh, to be sorry. Um, and if uh, set up properly, it would also help reduce litter in the communities. It would re reduce the burden on local businesses, if anything, you know. And it would be a cheap, a much cheaper way to deal with these issues as we progress towards the long-term goals. You know, I, I think there's a problem that people tend to have where it's one or the other. We can either think long-term or we can think short-term, but we forget the fact that while waiting for these long-term long goals to come to fruition, if you're doing nothing in the intermediary time, you're just allowing a problem to fester. And if, it's like saying, hey, I cut my finger. Well, I'll just wait until it's infected to heal it. Right? No, you clean out that cut so you don't get the infection, so it doesn't spread. You see that sign of infection, you clean it out. You do something about it right away. You know, you don't wait until it gets worse and worse and worse. You know, th these issues are really not as complicated as people make them out to be. I think a lot of it is catering to the people that are fund funding campaigns and catering to these big businesses. And, you know, we we've got to start putting people before profits. We've got to remember that a human life is worth more than a politician's campaign. Thank you. Hi, uh, Ellen, Acting Mayor, City Council, hello. Uh, a lot of us were out there feeding people tonight, and one of the things that I'm hearing is that there's been a pushback from the police department towards the poor people here in town all of a sudden like, that there was a type of detente that was happening and the, the police weren't really pushing people around, but I don't know if it's true or not, but it seems like after we asked yep. the chief to look into that, all of a sudden we got the cops up there a certain authority. So I don't, maybe you guys can address that in your, your various meetings and stuff. Uh, one thing I would like to uh, comment on is the, uh, on, I didn't get a chance to. Item number seven on the agenda, Skull and Ranch was a wonderful art community here in town. Can we get that going again? There was a lot of opportunity. I went there and took craft classes and stuff. It was awesome. So um, if we can keep Skull and Ranch, I didn't get to hear all what was about that because we do need opportunities in here. Um, another thing on item number six, it says State Homeland Security Grant Program. So I'm, by reading this, I guess this is going to go, um, what are you going to do with this money? And can we use it to buy like a military water truck and put it out on K Street? Because this is going to be an emergency situation. Yeah. Like we would like call in the National Guard or something. But if we just had like a, a, one of those military, water, they used to call them uh, water buffaloes when I was in the service. You know, big old tank of water and then we could move that and then people could like fill up their jugs if there's some big problem with uh, turning on those water fountains because they're not on yet. And by the way, the bathrooms aren't open either. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, that concludes public comment. Comments, are there uh, comments from council members? Council Member Hansen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. This is an item for the city manager and for the follow-up log. It's been about six months a uh, little less than since we implemented some of our new parking restrictions in the central city. And we had talked about coming back uh, at the six month time period, surveying uh, the residents about how those restrictions were performing. So I just like to ask uh, by the end of April that we do that survey and come back to council. And as another part, um, I'd like the staff to look at modernizing our residential parking permit program so you can apply online and that if you have a city utility bill, you don't need to send in a, a separate bill. We can just cross-reference our own database so it's easier for people to renew their permits. Okay, Councilmember Warren. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just wanted to uh, thank the city manager uh, and Councilwoman Ashby and my colleagues here for um, helping to put together 
uh, what I believe will be a nice presentation next week. I look for constructive conversation and hopefully uh, a positive response from my colleagues relative to uh, what we're going to be proposing. We think it's good for the city and we think it offers a more immediate solution to some of the very plaguing issues that are affecting people and residents of our city. Uh, but I also want to layer in, and it may not happen next week, an even better opportunity as well for a more permanent um, plan for um, the homelessness in our community so we could have multiple layers and multiple steps. So if we have a chance, we may touch on it next week, we may not, but uh, we'll deal with the more urgent matter uh, first, and then if uh, the opportunity presents itself, we'll be talking about a more permanent solution, at least for District 2. Hopefully it might encourage some of the other actions in other parts of the city as well. So thank you. Thank you. I didn't know if you were clapping for me or him. All right, so on uh, Thursday, March the 16th, uh, District 7 will have office hours at 6 p.m. at the Robbie Waters Pocket Greenhaven Library. Uh, we're bringing City Hall to the neighborhood. Uh, come by with your questions, any way that we can help you in the community. And for more information, you can contact my office at 916-808-7007. And if you want to walk with friends on Saturday, you can walk with friends at 9 o'clock at Mesa Grande Park and at 9.30 at Valley High Park. The event is open and free to the community. And after walking, everyone gets together, introduces themselves, does some exercising, exercises and has a fun way of participating in a dance contest. They teach all the, the latest dances for those who are older and need to learn those things. And then fresh produce is handed out to all the participants after, um, after the walk and after the dance. So that'll take place on Saturday, 9 o'clock at Mesa Grande, 9.30 at Valley High Park. And the event is free. So spread the word for us, if you, if you will. Seeing no more questions, city attorney, anything? City manager, anything? My city council members are done. <laughs> this meeting is hereby adjourned.